Hey guys, welcome to another full scene tutorial. So today we're going to be doing this like sci-fi sort of like abduction scene. Uh, and when I originally made this, I made three different ones, but they're all made in the exact same way using basically the same layout. And instead of creating a new scene every time, all I did was rotate the camera. So let's jump straight into this. So we're going to start off by modeling the full scene before we get into any texturing. So let's go ahead and create a plane and this plane is going to be our floor. So I'm going to make this plane quite large just go for like 3000 by 3000 and we're going to give this 400 segments both ways cool so i'm also going to create a camera and we're going to level this camera out so i'm going to reduce its coordinates to zero on everything and as i do with all my scenes i have a second viewport down in my bottom right which i'm now going to apply this camera to Let's move our camera back and move our plane down slightly so we can have a look at what's going on. Get rid of my make this quick shading so I can see. Cool. So to get our floor, I remember for this I used a lot of noises and like layered up all these noises uh, to get uh, a displacement. But we're going to be using redshift displacement for our textures. So I think I need a, a bit of simpler displacement. So we're just going to come ahead and grab a displacer. Put this displacer on our plane. And in shading, let's turn on noise. Now this noise is already way too small. So what I want to do is in our noise, is increase the scale to like 4,000. And in our display cell, it's up the height to about 120. And now we get these like bumps and hills going on. So it's really trying to find something we like the look of. For this display cell here, I used a load of different ones on top of each other. So let's go ahead and turn this into a layer. So on our shading, on the drop down, you can click on layer. And this will put our current noise into a layer. So back on, on the noise that we have. Let's just have a look through some different ones and see what we like. So that is kind of interesting. Dense, give some big hills. My usual go-to for this is like Naki because Naki is like my favorite one. Let's just go through them. I mean, Naki does look good. That's often what I use. But you guys can choose whatever you want. I am gonna go with Naki, it's just too good of a displacement map. Cool. So let's go ahead and sort our camera out. So like I say, to get this one here, I did rotated the camera. Uh, this one was default and this one was 90 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and let's make this side one because this is like my favorite one. So we're gonna rotate our camera by 45 degrees to get this like slanted angle so in our x-axis we're just going to rotate this minus 45 and you can see our plane has not moved at all it's our camera that's moved so the viewport down the bottom right we can see this now cool now i might just move our camera down if you come up to the top here where it says X, Y, Z, we have like a little axis and this is called world axis. So if I click this on, it's actually going to use the axis for the world instead of the camera because the camera axis has been uh, tilted by 45 degrees. So moving this like directly down, we might move it either side slightly. So turning on our world axis, we can move this like straight down. I'm just going to move it a bit closer to the floor and then a bit in. And then I might just rotate this up slightly so there's pointing a bit towards the sky again move it down move it a bit in cool looking good all right let's hide my camera so i think next let's well let's add some more peaks to this displacement so remember we created a layer earlier so we can go ahead and start adding shaders on top of this so i'm going to add another noise shader Actually, in fact, what I like to do is under surfaces and then tiles, you get like these uh, 
tiled surfaces like bricks and like lines and the one I like to use is hexagons. So it gets all these like crazy hills. So then if we overlay this on our current displacement map, you can see now it's like applied all these random hills around. And they're a bit prominent at the moment. So let's turn down the opacity of it. And you can just see it's added these like high points around. And if we turn this on and off, you can see the difference. These hexagons are not as prominent anymore. This has added all these like peaks. Cool. So I'm actually going to leave it like that for the moment. I think this is looking pretty good. Maybe let's just increase our displacement height slightly to about 150. And back in our shading on our displacer, I'm going to turn this down a bit more. Like 20%. Cool. And last one I'm going to add is a gradient. This gradient is just so that we can get a bit of a hill going on towards the back of our scene. If we imagine the back being raised up slightly, it'll be a bit more visible. So in our gradient, you can see it's created a hill, but this is currently going the wrong direction. So we can come into this and on our angle, we're just going to rotate this till it's pointing up the back corner where our camera's facing. And this is currently 90 degrees. So again, overlay this. And now you can see it's raising this out. We've got a bit of like a hill going on. But it's removed a lot of detail because this white section is being flattened out. So let's reduce our opacity to again about 20%. And you can see turning this on and off, what it's doing, it's lowering this corner here and raising the back corner. We can also come into our gradient and move our blacks and whites. So maybe we want them a bit higher at the back. We move our white up a bit lower. Yep, looking good. So turn this off and on. You can see the difference it's created. Cool. So this is our floor pretty much set out now. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Cool. Let's add in. Let's add in like these stairs. So I had like all these silhouettes. And they're super simple. I just used cloners. Uh, the bridge had a few splines on it. To get this like curve look but we're going to go ahead and make this like stairs this is super simple to do so come up and create a cube and i'm forgetting which end our camera is at now because i've hidden it camera is over here cool and i'm going to go ahead and grab a mograph cloner and put this cube in our cloner and we want to on our movement, let's put our Y to zero, and we want it moving on our X axis. So let's just go ahead and move this closer to the camera. Make our cube slightly smaller. And we want to place this clone roughly where we think our first cube is going to be. <clears throat> so you want to like line this up. About roughly, so I could see both ends of the stairs on our scene. So that's what I'm thinking here. So about here looks good. Maybe a bit higher. About there looks good. And what we want to do is switch this to endpoint up here. And now we increase this movement on our x axis all the way down to it's just appearing off screen. And then we know that's roughly about our end point. So I'm going to set this to about 700. And then just move this up slightly. So that it's appearing off both edges. So then all we have to do is add more clones in. But let's first of all go back and edit our cube slightly now that we've got this laid out. I want our cube to look like a stair. So they're quite... I had them quite tall and quite thin. So we can actually like step down them. So let's go ahead and make this a bit thinner and a bit taller and again place our clone. And you can see what's happening. First of all, we need to rotate these. Because I've rotated my, my camera, um, these are being offset 
a, a different angle from, from the perspective. So we're going to go ahead to our cloner and under transform, we can change the angle on our <laughs> Z axis. I always forget this. You always see me like deciding which axis I want to use. And we're going to do this minus 45. And now they should all roughly be facing upwards. But we're going to go after the increase our end point now because you can see they're not going far enough down let's just increase our end points like 800 900 cool looking good you can see a step in the bottom corner here awesome and we're just going to go ahead and increase our count so they just start to touch each other About 30 looking good. And you can see we now have a staircase going down. Awesome. So my issue with this staircase right now is it's super subtle. These letters I've added in are actually in post, right? But you can see they cut off in some areas. And this is where the hills are in the background. And I did this on purpose so you can see a bit of the background. Right now, we're looking at our stairs. We're losing all of the geometry behind the stairs the stairs are probably a bit high so let's go ahead and just move these stairs down slightly maybe move them just so we get some like geometry in the background that we can work with later on cool this is looking good let's go ahead and save it again so we also have this like handrail going down uh, and this is going to be done with one one spline. But these like uh, uh, vertical handrails or the bits connecting the handrail to the stairs, we're actually going to put inside our cloner. So let's turn our cloner off. So this is the this is the cube that we have. If we go ahead and grab a cylinder, and from our top view, we're just going to move this cylinder over so it's on top of our cube. It's a bit smaller and a bit thinner. And if we just pull this inside our cloner now, it's going to be cloning between the two objects. You see, if we turn this on, it's going to go stair, little cylinder thing, stair, little cylinder thing, which is not what we want. So we're going to have to put these two in a null. So clicking on both of these two objects, Alt G to put them in a null. So it's now going to clone them as one object. But the difference here, I don't know if you've noticed, is it's using our origin of our null and not of our cube. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this. There's a better way of doing this now I think about it. Go all the way back. I'm just going to make our cylinder a child of our cube. So now it's going to clone the cube and the cylinder is part of this cube now. And it's using uh, the axis origin of the cube. So when I turn my cloner back on, it won't have moved at all. Cool. So now we can just eyeball this. We can think how tall are these uh, little rails? They're probably a bit thick, maybe a bit smaller. So I'm going to go into my cylinder and turn my radius down to 1.7. Let's just get them a bit thinner. And I might have them. We have to think about the perspective of our human as well. You got to think the rail would be about the same height of his his like elbows. So these are probably a bit tall at the moment as well. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce our height down to say 55. A bit lower maybe. Let's go. Let's go 50. I mean we can come back and change this a bit later on. Even lower. Let's go 45. Cool. So next up we want to add this like rail that goes down. And we're just going to do this with a cylinder. And we're just going to have to eyeball this. So let's grab a cylinder, turn this 90 degrees, make it longer. And from our top view, we can just place the middle of this cylinder on the middle of where all our other cylinders are. So then make this the same length.
and we probably want this cylinder to be slightly bigger than the ones we're using for the stairs. If the stairs ones are 1 1.7, I'm going to make the radius of this cylinder 2. Cool. And now it's floating above, so let's just lower it down. And make sure it intersects our other cylinders. Cool, so we have this stair going down. Our scenery is kind of set up. What are we missing? We're obviously missing uh, the spaceship or alien or whatever you want to call it. So this is where we get into the fun bit because we're going to be using displaces to get some of this mapping. So let's just go ahead and model this out first. So you can use whatever you want. I've got cubes. This was like a like uh, this was a this was a pyramid that I like cut the end off. Uh, you got to think about where your lights will be coming from. The, definitely the easiest one for this tutorial is uh, this sphere because the light is just coming out the bottom and I had some coming out the edges. So let's just go ahead and do that. So let's create a sphere and I'm going to make this sphere huge. I just roughly want to place it a bit outwards. I mean, I'm looking at my scene in the bottom right and you can just start to eyeball where you think you want this. That's looking good. And we're going to keep our polygons in the sphere the same. But you can imagine, if I rotate this slightly, this little circle here is where the light's going to be coming out of. So we're going to have this pointing roughly towards... where our where our person's going to be standing cool great start so let's create this like extra geometry because all this like uh sci-fi kind of like paneling is done with displacement maps so let's go ahead and make this like extra geometry on this so this includes like this hole here these like extra little lights uh, let's just go ahead and create that so i'm going to come up and create a tube. I'm going to pull this tube up. And make it a bit wider. Now we're going to make everything that we add to this a parent of this tube. And you'll see why in a second. So let's just go ahead and add some things into this. So what have we got? So initially, my tube has like bit of dent in the top of it so let's go ahead and make this editable and then control a and we we'll right click and say optimize to make sure all our points are connected and then ul on the keyboard is our loop tool i'm going to grab this right click extrude inner and then extrude and this is going to make a little dent in this and the reason this is happening is because i have crate caps on so i'm going to turn that off but make sure you have preserve groups on to make this one ring I'm going to go ahead and extrude this in slightly. Cool. And also had like, you can't really see it on this. I wonder if you can see it on any of them. I was adding like little details in. So this one here, you can just about see it. If you imagine like a, a shutter on a camera, uh, I have like this shutter going around the edge of it. And this is really simple to do. So I'm going to come up and create another cube move this cube up and I want this cube quite flat and make it smaller I'm going to go ahead and put this cube in a cloner so grab a cloner put your cube in it and move your cube up and what we want is a radial cloner for this so grab radial and change it to XY <laughs> again I always forget which one I want and make this a bit wider and we're just going to move it up so it's slightly poking out the side of this uh, tube cool. and now under transform we're going to go ahead and move this around slightly so let's first of all rotate it so it's facing sideways by like 60 degrees so you can see now they're all like facing towards each other if we go ahead and add some more clones 
you see we get this like shutter but they're all overlapping with each other at the moment and in fact they're actually not quite touching the edge properly so to do this i'm just going to make my cube a bit longer so now it's oh that was by the wrong way a bit longer so now it's poking into the side of this now and to get like the shutter where it's not overlaying each other i'm going to make my cube editable and we want to find the back corner actually let's find the front corner of this cube so where is it it's up here i'm just going to take a guess i'm going to guess it's this end i might be right it might be wrong so going back into our cloner and then we've got this end selected you see it's way above if i move this end up it's moving the back end of this cube up so i've just moved up slightly now see they don't overlap anymore and we have like this shutter um layout awesome and again remember i said we're going to make everything a uh, child of the tube so i'm going to name this cloner our shutter and put it in my tube cool next up i had uh, these extra lights so these are actually done they're not actually physical lights in the scene they're done with illumination uh, when we get into texturing but we obviously need some geometry and again this was super simple i'm just going to grab another cube pull this cube up and we're just going to make this cube thin and long something like this i'm going to give it one subdivision on our z-axis could be a different one depending on which way you've elongated this and i'm just going to go ahead and make this editable and grabbing both our top points i'm going to extrude inner and then extrude this down so we've got a little indent in it and these are actually like slightly raised up in the middle so ul is our loop tool and going to our edge selection i'm going to grab this middle section here I'm just gonna move this up so we've got a little little raise in it and then i'm gonna go ahead and grab this bottom one again and just move it back down it doesn't really matter it doesn't have to be perfect so we've got this like slightly raised bit cool now going to our shutter that we had earlier i'm gonna click on our shutter and control drag to the top okay so i've copied our cloner with a shutter in it i'm gonna delete the cube from it and we're gonna use the same cloner drag this in but i'm going to name this one say lights okay and let's make our radius a bit larger so it pulls it out the side of this so this is what we have going on we're just going to edit the cloner that we already had so this works for it so under transform we don't want this at any rotations let's go back to normal rotation but at the moment this is upside down because it's facing the wrong way so in our z rotation we can just flip this over by 90 degrees uh, 180 sorry and then it's going to level this out and there you go you have these like little lights around the outside maybe we have a little too many of them i kind of like them to be symmetrical so an uh, even number is always a good idea so we currently have 19 and you see they're not symmetrical so i'm just going to round this down to 18. and now they're looking symmetrical cool now we need an inside of this tube now so i need to actually need to elongate this slightly so let's go ahead and grab our tube and then ul polygon selection i'm just going to grab these polygons and move them up slightly and i'm going to go ahead and put a lid on this as well so just grabbing a simple disc and raising this up and this doesn't need any uh, disc segments. We'll reduce this to one. And we're just going to increase the size of this so that it covers our hole. Cool. Remember, make all of this a child of your tube. Cool. So we have like this, uh, this hole with a shutter in it. We have to think about where our light is being emitted okay 
So the light on this scene is actually emitted uh, from like little rings inside. You can see roughly there's like these rings inside of these holes. So let's go ahead and create them. So grab a Taurus and then come up and grab another cloner. Put our Taurus in the cloner. This one's going to be down at the bottom. Raise this up. And this one's just super simple. We just have to increase our movement so it's going up inside our tube. Reduce our torus radius, our ring radius, make this a lot smaller. So we have these rings. And I'm just going to go ahead and set this to endpoint and reduce our endpoint slightly. So we don't want to go, go a bit overboard. The more lights we put into this, the more overblown it will be. And maybe I'll just up this to like five rings. But we want them to be visible. So I'm going to put them towards the edge because I want them to be visible when you look at this. It's just subtle details. Cool. And again, I'm going to name this uh, lights. I'm realizing I've named two of them lights. I'm going to rename my other one highlights. Cool. I'm going to rename this tube. This is going to be our hull. So there's a good reason we've made this a uh, everything a child of our tube is so that when we move this, it moves as one object now. And we actually want to go into our sphere. I'm going to rename this sphere our ship. This cylinder down here is our stairs. I'm going to group these and call it stairs. Our plane is our floor. I'm going to put a protection tag on our camera before we accidentally move it. I forgot to do that. Cool. So we're going to go into our ship and under our coordinates, you have where this ship is currently sat. So I'm going to go ahead and shift and select all of these and right click and say copy and then go to our hull, right click and say paste identical and it's going to give it the same coordinates. So now if we turn off uh, world axes. This is going to be on the same corner and we can just drag this out and you can see it's matching the circle polygons on the bottom of this and then if you want to put a hole in this all you have to do is come in and just delete this polygon. Okay so now this is where we've got to like, edit the size of this. <laughs> I've definitely made it a little too big to start off with. So let's go ahead and I think we could just grab the whole thing and maybe just like shrink it down so that's a pretty good size i'm actually pretty happy with that let's have a look at this so yeah i'm pretty happy with the size of this here and again let's pull it out slightly our shutter doesn't need to be visible just yet because we're gonna we're gonna put a hole in this but then we can have a look at these extra like highlight lights we have on the side and we can see they're not matching the contours of this spaceship so let's go ahead and find these so this is this cloner here and under transform we can start to add some angles to this so I could maybe rotate it down slightly by like 15 degrees and then if we move this cloner back down it's going to contour with it a bit better and then the final stage of this is obviously let's just move this, maybe move this in slightly the final stage of this is obviously we have to come in and edit the actual object so let's turn this off find the object and we're going to have to take a guess at which end this is. So grab one of the end polygons, turn it back on. And when I start moving this, which end is going to move? Not the correct end. So we're going to, we're going to go for the other one. So grab this polygon on the end. We actually want to grab this inside polygon and this polygon here as well. Otherwise this won't move correctly. So now that we've grabbed them, we can go ahead and lower this down and this is one of the biggest reasons we put this split in the middle cool looking good yep pretty happy with this let's go ahead and save it nice so let's think about our actual ship now so i actually had some extra details on this we had the light 
being emitted from the back of this ship and all these little highlights going along here as well and we're going to go ahead, go ahead and do that in a second let's first of all think about our displacement maps and how many polygons it's going to need so i want this ship to have a good amount of polygons to start off with uh just to round out the edges so on our ship our segments i'm going to up this to say let's just do let's do 35 it should be a good amount for it to work with. When this subdivides in our redshift displacement, it should be should be alright. So now we're gonna make this ship editable. So let's make this editable, press C. And first thing we're gonna come and do is create a hole in here. So we're gonna grab these polygons here and just delete them. So now we can see inside this ship, it's not quite perfect. So on our loop tool, on our edge tool, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this edge here. And we're simply just going to make this bigger so it goes to the set edge of where our hull begins and then drag it in so it doesn't look so obscure and there we have a hole in our ship so this is where our lights going to be emitted out of cool so let's go ahead and add this ring that we had around the top as well so on our ship go to our polygon tool and ul i use this tool a lot loop selection and we want to look at our viewport down here and just judge about roughly what's going to be visible. So if we did this like halfway, which is like this one here, it's not actually visible. You can see. So we actually want to move this forward for aesthetics look of the, this render. We want to move it forward slightly. So not that one. I think this ring, this ring here would look pretty good. So just going to go ahead and grab that, right click and say extrude. And we're just going to extrude this in slightly by say minus 20. So now we have this ring going around. We've got to go ahead and add these extra uh, like highlights here. So let's grab, let's grab a cloner and go find the cube of our highlights, which is down in our other cloner inside our hole. We're just going to copy this out control and drag it under our new cloner and on our new cloner we want a radial cloner now we're going to again just have to eyeball this up slightly we go ahead and go to our coordinates we ha already have our coordinates saved from earlier that our sphere is using so i'm going to right click and say paste identical and again this is going to put it in the same coordinates as our ship so if we made our radius bigger it's going to match our ship pretty much, but it's on the wrong axis at the moment. So I'm going to change this to XZ. So it's like matching the cross section here. And we can go ahead and start to line this up. So like down here. Like I say, you just have to eyeball it. Bring your radius in slightly. And you can see they're starting to be roughly in the right places. I actually kind of like this look uh, of these like pointed out slightly. Uh, so you can have a mess around with this and do whatever sort of uh, style you want. I'm going to stick to this one like this at the moment. But let's... So back in transform, we're going to rotate this. First of all, 180 degrees in our z-axis so it's facing the right way. And then we're going to move it to on its side. About... 55 degrees yeah that's looking pretty good move our corner down slightly and then reduce our radius so these start to like pinch in and I want them just overlapping in slightly cool increase our count we don't want to go too overboard with this just make it look good Again, have an even number and this is looking good just making sure it's stuck in the floor properly it's actually raised slightly here but it doesn't really matter you're barely going to see this but if i wanted to fix this i could just reduce our radius by like say one centimeter and just put it in slightly cool so this is basically all our uh, modeling done. I think the last thing we're missing is the little man. So the little man 
if you've installed any of the uh, extra bits of like cinema, like the visualization libraries and stuff like that, it'll be under presets in your content browser. And this is just what I use. Uh, I, I have a library of like people and stuff. You can go online and find models. Uh, but this is probably the easiest place to find ones so under visualization and then 3D objects and humans and 3D people, medium resolution. You can find, this is the guy I use here. We're just going to drag him in. And he's just like walking with his backpack. And that's ex this exact guy here. And we're just going to go ahead and lower him down. Rotate him 90 degrees. And then we need to rotate him minus 45 as well. We're just going to position him roughly where we think we want him. So that's looking a pretty good height. He fits on the stairs quite nicely. Might just drop him down a few stairs. We want the light to be pointing roughly at him. So we want him like more towards the center of our scene. Yep, there's good. Awesome. So this is all the, the modeling done. Let's uh let's jump into some texturing. We're gonna start with the texture for our spaceship. So this, this is gonna be using displacement maps. Um we need basically a height map for this, and then we're gonna texture this based on our height map. Because it's going to be grayscale, we're going to have some areas white and some areas black. It means we can add uh, variations in color using the same height map that we use for our displacement map. And for this, I'm going to use JS Displacements. If you guys have never used this before, it's a fantastic tool for creating uh, like sci-fi displacement maps. So I'll leave a link to this down below. It's absolutely free. Just download it. So once you open it up, you can choose on the left here all your types of displacement maps. And I'm going to go displacement two, and I'm going to use the crap pack. And this is like, if I make this bigger, can I make this bigger? It's a bit difficult to see. My screen's 4K, uh, but it's basically clones loads of like uh, shapes uh, and creates a height map based on this. And you can change around your parameters. You can change your background height, uh, maybe up the amount of uh, objects it's going to be cloning. And there's loads of different types. You've got like classic which is more like paneling, uh, big data, which is more like cross-hatching and stuff. Uh, you get the idea. But yeah, just mess around with this, find something you like the look of. You could even go really simple and just use the classic one, which is just simply squares. And you can go down on these little green bits so you can actually turn off certain objects. So I could just go really standard and just have loads of squares. Anyway, so yeah, that's JS Displacement. So the map I'm going to be using, this is the one I've generated here, if you want to guys want to look what I'm using. So let's jump into some texturing for this. So I'm going to come up and create a redshift material. Apply this material to my sphere. And let's pull my IPR up now. So I'm going to freeze my IPR there. So I'm going to add a simple dome light into this just to get some reflections so we can have a look at how it looks before we do some actual lighting for this scene so inside our material we're going to go ahead and grab this uh, map that we've just created using js displacements and drop this in and this is going to be our displacement map but we can start to see where this is like going to map simply by adding this into our output because I'm pretty sure it's not going to look correct to start off with mapping onto a sphere can be a little awkward at times so our map doesn't actually look too bad but depending what sort of what sort of uh, object you're using you might have to come and change this so on our ship here you have your tag and you can change it's like cubic let's see how it looks cubic so it's going to uh, tile this across but that's a bit busy uh, spherical Spherical looks quite good for this because it's all kind of starting to culminate down towards this hole that we have here. 
uh, cylindrical that's not going to work so for this i'm actually going to go i think spherical is good and spherical actually matches the U uvw mapping so let's go with that so that has our texture onto this and now we can s start to offset it if we want it to be in a different place see i don't like this very large uh object sat here maybe this doesn't look correct to me i can maybe rotate this and have it off screen maybe move it back slightly and i'm realizing this has probably looked pretty good animated as well <laughs> cool so i'm liking how this is mapped onto this now so let's go ahead and just add some texturing so i'm going to put this into actually let's just work on our base material so base material for this i don't want it too shiny and i want it quite a dark color we're going to use our displacement map as a color map okay so if i go in and grab a ramp put our displacement map into this and then put this into our output now i don't want any incredibly white areas so i'm going to change this white more like a gray so you can see now there's no no really bright areas so then if i put this into my diffuse color and then put this to my output you can see now it's colored in these different areas at different shades of gray i'm going to go ahead and up my roughness to like point point six yep looking good Let's give it some samples as well awesome good start to this so we can use uh, we could put some bump mapping in this as well, but I want to see what the displacement map looks like first because I think that will carry a lot of the bump mapping. So let's go ahead and grab a displacement node. And we're going to put this in, but we want to put the base material in, not our ramped material. And then put this into our output under displacement. Cool. Now remember, we have to add a redshift tag to our ship so redshift object tag so we can come into geometry and turn on our tessellation and displacement cool so let's just isolate this area and see what's going on so we have no height on this at the moment so let's up our displacement scale to 10 and this should add a bit of bump mapping in I'm realizing I'm using a displacement blender there, not an actual displacement now. Wrong node. I was wondering why I didn't have anything going on. There we go. Now we have some bump mapping going on. So I'm going to turn off smooth subdivisions. We want some hard edges on this. And I'm going to extrude this by, say, let's have a height of 5 to start off with. Definitely need it a bit higher than that. Let's go 10. Let's up our scale to 20 and then up our height to 20 as well now we have to have all these areas poking out i'm thinking this does probably doesn't have enough subdivisions because we're losing a bit of detail in this and some of the corners are starting to be rounded out so on our maximum subdivisions i'm going to increase this to 10. and we've gained a little bit of detail but what i'm looking at right now is it's hard to see because it's progressive rendering is it's rounded out some of these corners here I want these a lot square and the reason it's doing that is because we need to tell it to have crate subdivisions if our lengths are too short or too long if that makes sense so that's where this minimum edge length comes in so at the moment it's set to four <clears throat> so once it hits four it won't subdivide by any more well once it hits a length of four um that's when it'll start subdividing but if i lower this to two anything anything after two it'll start subdividing if that makes sense so i'm going to drop this down to two and you can see now that these edges are starting to really like sharpen up now they're not as rounded cool i like the look of this so let's go back and look at the whole object again yeah i actually really like the look of this this looks pretty good this is actually a lot cleaner than the one i had when i used this as well I think I had a very different displacement map for this. I used a different one from JS Displacements. Um, this is a definitely a different map. But this one's very sci-fi as well. Cool. So we've got our displacement map on there now. Let's 
let's do the texturing for the floor. So this floor was created using uh, a load of custom textures that I like spliced together. Uh, but that's a bit of a mess and all those textures are paid textures so i can't really distribute them so again i've gone and found you guys some free textures i mentioned this in one of my previous videos polygon i'll leave a link to this down below come to this website create an account textures and then you get a load of textures that are paid for textures but obviously you want some free ones so under credits we can change this to free and now these are all free textures that you can download and we're going to try working with this uh, this like rocky cliff jagged o o o4 texture, so change your resolution to 6K. And under download options, we don't need all these. I'm going to turn off diffuse variant two. I'm going to turn off displacement, and we're just going to want ambient occlusion, diffuse, displacement, gloss, normals, and reflections. So go ahead and download that. I've already done it. So this is all my textures here, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new material this material to my floor so coming into our new material this new material is applied to our floor i'm going to go ahead and grab all these textures and drop them in and your pc might like lag for a second because it's going to be trying to uh, process some 6k textures so don't worry if your cinema just like freezes for a second just give it some time to process so i'm going to spread all these out cool put them down there and I'm going to turn on my IPR and isolate my bottom left corner of this material. Let's just have a look at this area down here. Cool. So all these materials here, let's find the ones we want. So you want to start with our color variant, which is our diffuse color. So I'm going to bring this up and put this into my base material diffuse color. And instantly you can start to see how this is mapped. So this is mapped probably a little big at the moment. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and on our floor, I'm going to change its projection mapping to cubic. That looks that looks better, I think. Awesome. Uh, AO color. This is basically uh, going to mess with highlights. So I'm going to come up and create an AO node. And put this in, this texture into our AO as our dark color. And then under our material, this is going to go overall, overall color. And this is really subtle, but it just adds some of these like areas into it. Cool. Displacement map is an obvious one. So we need a displacement node. And this can sit over to the side. So this goes into our displacement node. And this goes into our output. And this can just sit down here. So gloss is our reflection roughness. So I'm going to grab this, put this into my reflection roughness. And then secondly, this is our reflection. And this is going to be our reflection color. So pump this into properties, reflection, color. Cool. And now the weight on here we need to edit. So this is, can be like how rough we want this material to be. So I'm going to put this about point, point 0.7. It's a bit of a rocky texture. It's quite rough. And then lastly, we have a normal map here, which is our bump map. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a bump node. And we want to change this bump map once we put it in. So texture input. And on our bump map, we want to change this from height field to tangent space normal. And then put this in as our overall bump map. Cool, let's turn on our IPR and have a look at this. So we have a very rocky texture going on. This has no displacement map yet, so let's go ahead and add a displacement. Let's add a redshift object to this tag so we can turn on our geometry overrides. Again, turn off smooth subdivisions. And let's up our displacement scale to 10. It's adding a load of bump mapping into this. And then our maximum displacement is up to three. We just want to raise this up slightly, get some like peaks and some dips in this. Awesome. So let's go back and look at our whole thing and make sure this doesn't look completely out of place. Yeah, I'm liking the look of this. We have this like rocky texture. This is not, not going to be the same as uh, what I have here, obviously. 
but there is something I'm gonna extra I'm gonna do to this. So I'm gonna first of all move my textures around. So this is my base material, and I'm gonna come up and grab a material blender. And we're just gonna do one extra thing to this. And I'm hoping it looks good. I'm not sure how it's gonna turn out. So put that back in, cool. And then we're gonna grab this material. And we can get rid of all the ports on this. We don't need any of the ports. And I'm just going to go ahead and make this a bit of like a lighter white material. And reduce my uh, roughness to like 0 0.3. So this is a shinier material. And this can go in as my layer color 1. And I'm going to grab a ramp. Drag this in. Now I have a material here that I've gone and found. If you type in like grunge mapping on Google, you'll find loads of maps like this. And this is like a, a stickle map, which is like really high, like uh, specular points. And we're going to add this in. And this is how I got like these, these like little white dots all over this. And we're just going to add this in and see what it looks like. So let's go ahead and grab this material. Drag this in. Like I say, go on Google. Look for grunge mapping and you'll find stuff like this. And we're going to put this texture into our ramp. And then ramp to the output. And we can go and have a, had a look how this is mapping. And we don't want this too small, but we don't want it too big. So it's currently, it's currently a little small, I think. So we're going to make this 0.8. Point six. Yeah, that is good. And then we can mess with our ramp. We don't want too many high points on this. We just want some like points specular for this harsh light to bounce off of. Cool. So then I can put this in as my layer one blend color. And this is going to put this material on top of this. And it's not really showing at the moment. You can see we have like these, these gray areas. Uh, and that's because we don't really have any light to like harshly bounce off of it yet. But I'm just going to go ahead and change the color slightly. Add some more white areas. Oh, this is my roughness. I want to change this and then up my reflection weight. Cool. So we have like these little specular bits in here. Maybe pull my ramp a bit wider. Cool, and this should look good once we add some like harsh lighting into this. Nice, nice, nice. So next up, we want to texture uh, this man and this this staircase, and this is super simple. You want an absolute basic texture for this. You don't want any bump map or anything. You just want a flat texture that's going to cause a silhouette. So to do this, I'm just going to come into my material, make the color slightly darker, up my roughness to like 0.8. Add some samples and just apply this to my stairs and my man. And we can delete the texture off the man that we had earlier. Cool, let's save this. Good, good, good. So this is basically the start of this now. This is how uh, when we add some lighting into this is really going to take off. We're missing one thing though. I forgot to add textures to this, these little like uh, extra bits. But also we can see that our bump mapping is now interfering with these little extra bits that we have. So we're going to have to move this around slightly. So let's go ahead and isolate this area here. And let's go and move this around. So what am I seeing right now? This ring is being interfered with. So the whole thing the whole hole needs to be pulled out slightly until you get it so it's not interfering. So like that. Cool. But now you can see these are hovering, I think. So let's go in and find our highlights. We're just going to lower them until we see some interfering on these now. We'll get some interfering about there. And 
we should still have the same selection from earlier, so we can move this up and down. And I'm just going to move this down until we see it start to mesh into the floor. Cool. Now I'm going to copy the texture I used for our staircase. I'm going to use this texture for these. Because these don't need any like crazy mapping. We just want a bit of a, a dark texture for these. I'm going to make them a bit blacker. Apply it to all of these. See it already blends in very nicely. Looking good. And we want one more texture for this. So I'm going to copy this texture. Go into here. And this is a texture we're going to use for highlights. So on our cube that we use for the highlights. I turn our highlight off. You can see this cube here again. We're just going to select these in, inside two faces and apply a material to this, our new material. Turn this back on and then I'm going to go ahead on our material, go to overall emission, turn our emission to one and put this some crazy color. See now you can see these are lighting up now. And we actually need to apply this texture to here as well. Cool. So we don't want one flat color. We want a ramp on this. So let's go ahead and create a ramp. And we want the color of this to roughly match the color we're going to use for the lighting. Because once we pull this into post, we can change the whole hue of it. Because we're using the same color for the lighting and the highlights. If we do a hue shift, uh, we can change it. So this, this render was actually originally red. Uh, I rendered out red, a very red render. I turned it blue in the end. But the point being is we want to use the same color as we're using for our lighting. So let's just remember that when we when we do this. So let's choose now. I'm going to make this render a... Let's make it like a, a purple color. Let's go with like a purple color. So we want basically purple... To maybe white or a lighter purple on our ramp and now you can see we have this like gradient in this highlight cool next up we need to go and mess with this up here now because these are now being interfered with because of the displacement map so this is our This is our second cloner up here. And what can we do to fix this? So we need to increase our radius slightly until they just like stop being interfered with. So about there looks good. If I increase the frame of this. So they're no longer being interfered with because I've increased the radius, but they're now pointing out of the floor. So the same, I have to come in and grab the end polygon that we had earlier. And this is actually the wrong end, so I'm going to grab the other end. Make sure you have to grab... You have to grab these two points as well. And we're just going to lower these into the floor. Awesome, looking good. And then we can come and apply that material that we had earlier onto our inside polygons. And I've <laughs> ended up applying it to the floor somehow. Cool, so now we have this gradient on these as well. And we need to go ahead and apply the base material to this and then drag this before our highlight material. Awesome. So let's go ahead and look at the whole thing again. Do we have any errors? We do have some errors. So down in this corner here, you can see they're being engulfed. And this is because the uh, the bump mapping and the displacement mapping is uh, going over the top of it. So we're going to go back and increase our radius just so these point out. And now these are starting to like hover off our object a fair bit now. Realizing the bump mapping and displacement mapping is like much, much heavier on one side. It doesn't actually bother me. I actually quite like having them out here, but I don't want them. 
don't really want them hovering. So what I'm going to come and do is back on this object, I'm going to grab our bottom polygons and I'm just going to elongate these out. So now they should be connected back to our spaceship. So basically all we have left now is to uh, texture our lighting uh, and get some environments going. So let's start with let's start with getting our lights set up. So there's two things we need to do for this. First of all, if we if we're using these um, if we're using these like cylinders, these uh, these torus we have in here as our lighting, they can't be used as our lighting unless they're one object. And at the moment, they're a cloner. If I come and find uh, our lights here, see it's this cloner here. So they're not considered one object. So I need to right click this and say current state to objects. And this is going to create all these torus. So then I can go ahead and turn off the original ones. And we have all these objects here. I'm just going to select them all, right click and say connect objects and delete. And this is now going to create one object. So this is our light. Cool. Now I'm going to have light emitting from the top of this as well. And I think when I originally made this, I had the light go around the whole way. And the issue of this is my my sky was getting very blown out. And it's very hard to see, but it's very subtle. If you can notice, there's like, see where my mouse is, there's like darker areas here and here. And that's because I actually chose to only have the light emitting from the top side of this and not the, all the way around. So if we go back to our ship... If we have a look at this, we don't want it emitting all the way around. Maybe I start with this, these polygons here, and maybe up to these polygons here. So I'm just going to come and select, let's try and memorize where these are. I'm going to come and select these polygons here, and we're going to right click and say split, and this is going to create a new object just with these polygons and we're going to use these polygons as a light but then back on our ship we need to delete these ones otherwise they'll be over the top of our light and it will basically block the light yep so let, let's add some lighting to this so I'm going to come up and create a area light I'm going to turn this area light from rectangle right at the bottom to mesh and we want to use these two objects here so I'm going to come in, right click these and say connect objects and delete. And this is going to create one object out of these. And I'm going to put these into their uh, child of my light. Now you don't actually have to do this. It's just me being uh, trying to keep my scene tidy. But then if I drag my light into where it says mesh, it's now going to use these lights, these, uh, these mesh as a light. So let's turn this on. So you now see the light is being emitted from these cylinders inside of here and these polygons around the edge. Now we want to go ahead and make these visible so you can see them and we want to increase the samples let's go 2048 2048 there we go okay and again remember we want these to be the same color that we're using for the highlights so we can change it later so we have a purple color let's go ahead and use a purple color cool now this still looks quite dark, but once we add an environment to this, uh, the light is going to start scattering everywhere and we'll get these like highlights. And you can see already, remember this texture earlier where I was putting these little specular highlights? This has already started to happen, so this is looking great. Cool. So let's go and create a environment. So grab a redshift environment, and we're going to drop this in, and this is going to be absolutely blown out beyond proportions when I turn my volume on. So let's turn volume contribution scale to one and give this 2048 samples as well and this is going to be completely blown out right now so back in our environment i'm going to turn my scatter down to 0 0.001 cool and let's just isolate one section of this 
And this is going to look very pixelated to start off with. Again, my PC is not much of a powerhouse. So maybe we just want to mess with our phase a bit and move these uh, volumetric lightings like forward and back a bit to get some of the detail on our ship back. So if I put this minus, it's going to move some of our volumetric lighting back and further away from the camera. This is quite important at the top here. You'll notice you'll, you'll lose the round shape of this. So if I make this higher, you can see it's starting to blow out these corners and you lose a lot of detail. So let's just move it a bit closer. We're going to go minus three, I think. So this is looking like a bit of a mess at the moment. We won't really see the final image until we render this out. So let's do some quick render settings. So I already have mine set up. This is the resolutions I use for Instagram. So this is usually what I, I do it. I'm going to set our renderer to redshift. And my min and max samples are 128 to 56. And I have a GI in here with brute force uh, with 2048 samples as well. And that should do, to be honest. My maximum trace depth. Mm. Let's lower our reflections to like eight. So we don't need that as high. Our combined as well is a bit high. So let's reduce this to 10. And this should just speed up our render slightly. Cool. I think I'm just going to render this out. And uh, I'll see you when it's done. So one test render later. We can have a look and see what needs to be changed about this. So what I'm noticing to start off with is our volumetric lighting is very grainy. So let's go ahead and just double the amount of samples we have uh, in our volume. That should hopefully clean it up a bit. And these textures down the bottom, I'm not particularly liking. Um, this is usually why I tend to make a lot of my textures myself, because then I can, as I make it, I can really control what's going on. But for the sake of this tutorial, I was using a pre-made texture. So I'm actually going to remove our reflection roughness and I'm just going to have an overall roughness of 0.8 and then our specular material I'm going to increase this to 0.4 and maybe that that will do it I'm actually as well going to grab a color correct put our defuse into this color turn on our IPR without any lights on and I'm just going to make our defuse color a bit darker I think turn the gamma down make it like a 0.8 I wonder if we can add a hue shift maybe I pull some saturation out of this as well make it more of like a gray color because we only really want like a silhouette out of this Cool, looking good. As well, I think our lights are maybe a little bit bright. So in my area light, I'm going to come to my intensity multiplier and drop this down to like 70. I should clean it up a little bit. Finally, one last thing to do. This light is very visible and I'm not... I'm not a huge fan of that, so I'm going to make this whole ship a little bit smaller. So grabbing our light, I'm going to make it a child of the ship quickly, so then I can grab the whole ship and just make this smaller. And then put our light back as a child. Make sure it's still working nice. And because we're using volumetric lighting, we have a chance here to mess with some uh, like god rays and stuff. So this is the polygons that have been used for the light. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these here. Right click and say split. So we have a second load of polygons here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the whole thing a little bit smaller. So it's going to sit below the light. And then go ahead and let's hide this quickly. Go ahead and grab every other polygon is an even number. I'm not going to grab the end ones actually. I'm just going to grab the ones just to the side. And I'm going to right click and say extrude. 
turning back on our light, I'm going to extrude this so it's a bit higher than the light. And then I'm going to go ahead and give this new set of polygons the base, like, silhouette material. And what I'm hoping to do here is now the light is blocked in certain places. And you won't notice how messy this is once I turn the lights on. But it's blocked in certain places. So we should get, like, some god rays going on coming out of this. And it will make this huge, like, white light a lot less prominent. Let's go on and have a look at this. Yeah, I'm actually a lot, a lot more fan of that. Cool. And this has given us some areas to work with this now once we pull this in Photoshop. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and render this out, and I'll see you again in a minute. So we have our new render, and this render I think is a lot better. Uh, it's less blown out, the texturing is a lot more of a silhouette, and we've created some like nice god rays by blocking some of this lighting off. If I switch between the two, you can see it's basically night and day. And this also gives us a lot more room around this spaceship to add some uh, funky post effects in. But the first thing I'm going to do before I jump into Photoshop is I want to create a masking layer, or what I call a masking layer. And this allows me to select certain areas. I use this in motion design as well. Uh, it's like, imagine if you're using a green screen, you can just select the green and you edit everything that's in the green screen. This is the same sort of process. So I'm going to go ahead and delete any textures we don't need. We only want to keep the two textures that have our displacement maps on them. And I'd recommend going ahead and saving this as a new file before you start messing with it. Cool. So I've deleted everything but the two textures that have the displacement maps because we need to keep them in here. And I'm going to go ahead and this is our floor texture here. I'm going to go ahead and delete everything only keeping our displacement map down here and then come in and create a new material put this material into our surface and turn off diffuse and reflections and under overall we're just going to turn on emissions that have a nice bright color it doesn't matter what color and turn it up to one this also means that we can come in and delete any of our lights as well and we can also go into our redshift settings and turn off our G GI. Cool. So now if I turn this IPR on, you see once it processes the uh, displacement maps, we now just have a red color here. So when we pull this into Photoshop, I can quickly select anything that's in the red and be able to edit that very like quick and simply. So we're just going to go ahead and do this the rest of this as well. So this is our This is our ship. So again, we just only want the displacement map and turn everything off. And just add a different color. Let's go with a purple this time. And now that one's a purple. Now we need to want to split this up into sections and understand what we might want to edit differently from other places. So I've grouped the floor together. I'm going to go ahead and group the ship together apart from the lights. So let's copy this and we want one without the displacement map. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this to everywhere but the lights. So add it to all these sections. Cool. And then I'm going to grab a new material, change the color on this one like a green and I'm just going to apply this to the lights because I want to do something with them once we get into Photoshop and then finally one more I'm going to group all our stairs and our little man together to make this like a yellow color so once we have this render it out make sure you don't save over the top of the render you've just done just save this as a, like, a new new render called mask or something. And we're going to use this once we jump into Photoshop. So I'll see you there. So here we are in Photoshop. I have my image and I have my masking layer. So let's get straight into this. So first of all, always when I jump into Photoshop, I'm going to start just like color correcting. So start off with brightness and contrast. I usually up my brightness. If you're having this going to be displayed on a screen, you want this to be like relatively bright. 
So we'll up this to like 50 and then increase our contrast. Nice, get like 30. And then under our levels, we can like mess with the, the blacks and such. So if we want to really like hone in our silhouette, we might pull this in a bit. Cool. I might just lower our whites slightly. Looking good. Under our curves, maybe like a contrast, linear contrast. Probably don't really need it for this. You probably do a custom curve if you want. Uh, maybe I make it a bit brighter. Soften it out a bit. The best thing about this is every time you add something new, just keep turning the layer on and off and you decide, oh, do I like what I've added? Yeah, I think I like it. And it's got exposure. I don't think we need to add any exposure to this. We are going to add exposure to one area now that I think about it. So because these lights are so blown out, we're not seeing these like these rings inside here. And this is the reason I added this to our masking layers. I'm going to go ahead and select these rings. And then add a exposure to just these rings. Maybe just like darken them slightly. Or lighten them. Set. Just so they're like slightly visible. Cool. What else do we want to do? So we can come into our hue and saturation. Because we've done everything the same color, we can simply just like change this to whatever color we want now. So I had a blue to start off with. I mean, purple looks quite nice, but I do like having a bit of a blue. Like it's more of like a sci-fi feel if it's blue. And you can change your saturation. You pull the color out. You can even make this black and white. Actually, black and white quite like i'm actually just gonna stick with black and white i think um for this one cool now we can come and start adding some extra things into this so i actually where is it i added some smoke into this as well as these like letters in the background so let me show you the letters to start off with so let's go ahead and add some text and for the sake of this, I'm just going to call it tutorial. <laughs> you can add whatever text you want. Find like a sci-fi, uh, sci-fi like words. Like the words I have on here, this is defect. This is error. And this is glitch. So it's all quite sci-fi. And then find a font you like. I had a font I downloaded for this. Uh, it's called Progress Personal Use. Um, and it's a free font that you can go download. If you put it into Google, I'm sure you'll find it. So this is the font I used. And we're just going to go ahead and increase our size. How big do we want this? Maybe like 300. Way too big. 170. Just need somewhere to start. And I'm going to go ahead and just make this roughly the size of my plane that's my image but you see it doesn't perfectly add up it doesn't perfectly line up with the edges the l doesn't quite reach the edge so i'm going to make it slightly larger just so it reaches the edge and then raise this up so it's touching the top now there's no really great way of doing this apart from uh just duplicating this layer and then pulling it down and setting it underneath and i'm just going to go ahead and do this however many times I need to fill this. Cool. Get in there. Maybe you could do this with like ones and zeros. I think ones and zeros would be kind of cool. Just having like this pattern of ones and zeros in the background. And once I get to about here, I start to think whether it's going to 
line up with the bottom because I don't want any like completely overlaying. And if it's close enough, I think, well, I could just stretch this. Let's see what it looks like if I stretch it. Yeah, I don't think it looks too bad. Obviously, if you stretch it too far, it's going to look a bit, a bit elongated. But I think stretching it this far doesn't make a huge difference. It's awesome. We're going to go and apply that. And then grabbing all these layers now, I'm going to right click and say uh, merge layers. We have to uh, rasterize the layer first. So rasterize type and then merge layers. So now you have this have this one layer of all this type on it and I'm going to go ahead and place it below all our corrections and now this is again the reason I have uh, an overlay like this is I can grab this black color right click and say similar and now we've grabbed everything that's black so when I come down to my type I can create a masking layer for this and it's only applied it in the black areas now this definitely needs a bit of cleaning up but what this has done is it's highlighted, it's created a silhouette of like the back of the ship that we weren't seeing before, which is really cool. But as well, on the cliffs here, you can see it's created a silhouette on the cliffs that are so far back that we weren't seeing it because of the volumetric lighting. So this is really dope. But we're actually going to edit this slightly because what I like to do, I don't like such hard edges on this. So we're going to come up to our masking layer and I'm going to select all the black areas and then click similar so this is going to grab every black area and then right click and say select inverse and then create a new layer and we're just going to paint this layer black so this will paint in all these areas awesome so we just have this silhouette here now which actually looks pretty dope um, and I'm just going to go ahead and select say this bottom part here and control T to edit it and we're just going to make it slightly larger than our original. Press enter. And then again, select our ship. Control T, make it slightly larger. Make sure it overlays roughly in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and increase, reduce the opacity on this so I can see. And select this. Make it slightly larger. Something like that. And then we're just going to go ahead and blur this whole layer. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we only want to blur it by like a few pixels. And I'm going to select all of this, control C to copy, go back down to our overlay and paste this. And because it has no background, it's not seeing it as lining up. So line that up in the corner and deselect it. So now you'll see it's kind of like faded some of the edges around this. You can see like where this T is, it's like faded in here. And it's subtle, but it's one of those things you can see around the A's here, it's like faded it around the edge here. Cool. As well on the cliff, you can see it's like faded. Also, it's just one of those things that I like to do to make this like look a little cleaner. Awesome. So we have this uh text overlay now. So we can go ahead and we can say do whatever we want with this, we can overlay it. Uh, hard light, vivid light, uh, to make this stand out, just do whatever you want. It depends what sort of look you want to get. Um, I'm actually just going to leave it as normal and just like reduce the opacity to like 20%, 25%. Cool. Next thing I'm going to add to this is uh, a smoke layer. So let's find. So if you go on Google and look like type in smoke overlay or uh, smoke um, screen or stuff like that. You'll find like images like this, uh, which are smoke screens. And if you put this in and then under our blending, turn it to screen, it's just going to have the smoke. But because we already have volumetric lighting in this, we don't want the high peaks. We actually want to remove the high peaks. So I'm actually going to change this to subtract. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull 
some of the light out of this uh, volumetric lighting. And obviously this is a, like a bit big at the moment. And you want to really see what you want to do with your smoke. So this has a lot of white at the bottom, so I don't really like that. Um, let's make this bigger. Maybe rotate it slightly. Let's find somewhere that doesn't have such high peaks of white in it. Maybe here, this is looking good. And subtract this. Cool. And then if we can come into this, if we rasterize this layer, we can come into this with our eraser tool and make sure we have 0% hardness. And we just like start to remove some areas of this that we don't like the look of. Let's go ahead and reduce your opacity first. See if there's anything we really want to do with this. Mm, I made this smoke bigger, but I actually want it a lot denser. So I'm going to go ahead and make this smaller again. Because it's a lot easier to see it when it's smaller. Yeah, that's looking good. Again, mess with the opacity. Turn it off and on, see if you see anything you like. I think our... If I drag this below, I think our layer with all the text is probably a bit bright. Turn this way down, maybe like five percent, and this now starts to pick up some of this like smoke that we've added in. Cool. I think we're pretty much nearly done. Um, again, remember this can be in color if you want it to be in color, but I just decided to go with black and white. I think let's let's blur out this corner here, this corner closest to us. I don't quite like how we have so much detail in it, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate our original layer. And then filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're just going to blur this out. And you want to be looking at this bottom corner where I'm, it's going to be showing. So that's looking a good amount of blur. If I add a mask to this, and then we're going to add a gradient to this mask. So I have my gradient going from black to white here. And clicking on a layer mask, I'm just going to pull this gradient out from the corner. And it actually needs to be inverted. So we need black on the right, white on the left. And you just want to have the gradient in a place that adds some blur to this corner. So if I turn this off and on, you can see it's now blurring out this like bottom left corner. Probably a little strong at the moment, but you can you can reduce the opacity of this. And it picks up some detail again. So if I have this at like 85%. Yep, I like the look of that. Looking good. So I think we're pretty much almost done. I'm wondering what else I can add to this. Maybe you can add some like highlights to this. Uh, one thing I like to do with a lot of my work is add a specular highlight. So... If I grab my brush and have my brush huge and just like press on the corner here, it adds a big highlight and then I often just reduce the opacity of this. So then it feels a little brighter on one side. Again, because we've removed the color from this, I'm going to drop this down and put it below uh, everything. And you can turn it off and on and see what that's doing. It's kind of nice that it's having this like bright specular on this corner. But I might again just reduce the opacity slightly to like 10%. And it just brightens up this edge here. Maybe move it out slightly. Cool. And I think we're pretty much done. So also you can mess around with this and do whatever you want. Like I say, this is what I ended up with when I did this. 
um, let's make this smaller. So it's pretty much the same concept. This is why I left it so grainy as well, because I knew the grain wouldn't matter once we started adding like some smoke and stuff in. Uh, but I actually really like this in black and white. I think it looks really dope. So yeah, awesome. Thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed. <laughs>